Chapter 32 To J. H. Morrison Chicago, Illinois, April 4, 1889 Dear Brother Morrison, As the time is drawing near when we must make decisions what camp meetings we shall attend and what meetings pass by, the invitation extended to me while attending the meetings at Des Moines make it necessary for me to say a few words to you by letter. I have felt pained at heart to read letters from you that evidences that you are filled with doubts and unbelief still in the very message that I know to be present truth for the people of God for this time. I thought the light and blessing of God that came in at that meeting when I was with you would help you to put away the doubts and unbelief that is so natural to you, and that you would let go your prejudice and you would come to the light and walk in the light and that you would be in harmony with the work for this time. But I have not the evidence that I ought to attend your camp meeting, for I do not think we would labor in harmony. I might work as God has given me a message to bear to his people, and you might treat it as you did me and my work in Minneapolis. I know the Lord would not have me connect with you in camp meetings, and I bearing a message which I know to be the message for this time, and you and Brother Nicola and others working to make of none effect my message. It is hard enough for me to meet the skepticism and unbelief and prejudice and evil surmisings of those not of our faith, and in addition to this, to have the very leading men in our conferences standing ready to trig the wheels whenever an occasion offers to labor with those who have questionings and doubts and who pursue a similar course as was pursued at Minneapolis, would be altogether too great a tax upon my strength, and I should have no confidence that the work that I might do would be followed up. If you had walked in the light as God would have had you, you would have seen and understood what manner of spirit you were of at the general conference. But as you have had nothing to say in regard to the course you pursued at that meeting, I dare not trust myself to connect with you until I have some evidence that a decided change has taken place in you since the Minneapolis meeting. I would love to bear my testimony to the people of Iowa, but as long as you shall stand directly in the way to undo that which the Lord shall bid me to do, things would be left in a worse condition than before. For I have a special message to bear. The trumpet must give no uncertain sound. I shall cry aloud and seek to arouse the people to do the very work I am trying to do. I have no different position in regard to the contested question in Galatians. I feel no special anxiety upon that point, for I know light will not come till, as a people, we are in a different condition spiritually. The only great burden with me now is that our ministers, especially the presidents of our conferences, shall be converted men and have the meekness and lowliness of Christ, and where they can preach Christ and Him crucified and the righteousness of Christ. There have been so many Christless sermons and so much theory that the poor flock is starving for food, meat in due season. This is my burden, and I have no concern but that when we shall do the will of God, we shall know of the doctrine. But there must be far more praying and far more humility and meekness before we shall see the salvation of God among us as a people. Then we shall have a living testimony to bear that will reach hearts. We will have brokenness of hearts. All this cruel prejudice and unbelief that is so offensive to God will be swept away, and all this hard spirit will be removed from us. Well, I will write no more now, I have tender love for you all, but if there is no change in your spirit and in your faith, then when at Minneapolis, I know the Lord would not lay upon me the burden to connect with you, unless he gave me as plain an evidence as he did while we were in Minneapolis. I have a decided work to do, and wherever I go, shall labor in the same spirit, bearing the same message as I did at Minneapolis, at Des Moines. May the Lord help you to see he has great light for us at this time, is my prayer. Ellen G. White